Hi everyone, Donna McElvaney here. Today we are going to be doing a different type of pulling um, using Zebra, Red Heart Super Saver in Zebra. Um, this was all that I could find um, in my stash. Not sure what happened to the rest of it, but uh, this is what I'm working with today. So typically the moss stitch is the most common uh, planned pulling design and it makes a great pattern, it makes this great argyle pattern. Um, this is in the zebra. I have other videos that are using zebra and um, today we're going to be doing a granny, a modified granny stitch in zebra. There has been some buzz about it uh, recently on plans pulling with crochet. That's a Facebook page. There's been some buzz about doing this one um, in a different type of stitch in this modified granny stitch. So um, I worked up some of it here to see if I could get it. Um, the turns are different. The turns are kind of tricky. So um, it, it took me some time to get this worked out, to get this figured out. I actually uh, made a call to a plans pulling friend in Canada, uh, Miss Patricia, and between her and I, we kind of managed to work it out on um, how we should do this. So this is what I'm going to be doing today. Um, I had already snipped some off of here. And I had frogged some out. Rip it. Rip it. Rip it. Okay. So I'm going to uh, find my beginning again here. All right. We're beginning with the black. We're going to begin our row with black. We only have to, for, um, I'm going to be doing two sequences. For two sequences, I only need to do a one sequence chain. And it's not even a full sequence because I've only started with just a little bit of this black. But this will get me uh, two full sequences of this modified granny. Alright, so as I am going through this... Uh, the turns are going to be a bit tricky, so just bear with me as I'm doing the turns. Um, some of them, I may not do them correctly the first time, um, but just let me work through it and stuff just to make sure that I've got it right. All right, we're going to do fourth from hook. One, two, three, four on this because it is a double crochet. All right, we're going to be two doubles in each Um, in each chain there. We're going to be doing two doubles and one. We're not chaining one, but we are skipping one. We're going to be doing two doubles in this one. One and two. I'm using an H hook. Um, the Super Saver on the um, on the label, it suggests using an eye hook, and I tried the eye hook, and it was it was a bit disastrous. So I dropped down to an H. It's still not perfect, um, but it comes out a lot better than the other ones. This is a 5.0 millimeter. All right, skip one. I'm not chaining one. Two double crochets, and I skip this one, and I go into this next one, and two more here. I need to make sure I think I'm doing these a little bit too tight. I know that in my other one, I was getting three blacks. Three black sections. All right, I think I've got enough of the silver on here to begin with silver my next one. I should have done those a little bit more loosely. All right, skip one, going into this one. Now with these, with your die lot, it might come out a little bit more perfect than mine. Um, I tried it with the eye hook. It didn't go well. So I also tried it with a G. Somebody else had tried it with like a, a 4.5 hook and I tried that. That didn't work out for me either as far as getting um, each double crochet to come out perfectly without any type of color interfering with the next color like this one here. I have got some silver mixing in with that white and unfortunately that's just the best that I could get 
my stitches to go. And now I've got silver mixing in at the end of this white. So I'm counting it as three black, one silver, two white, and one silver. So yarning over for a double crochet, skipping one, going into the next one. And black begins with that one. Coming it to a very short end here. Yes, it will work. So if you wanted to make this four sequences, all you'd have to do is make a um, two sequence chain to do four repeats. There's one black, skip one, I'm doing this one a little bit more loosely, mine does not come out as crisp as the one that I had seen posted. Um, she had used a 4.5 hook and I tried it. It just didn't go as well for me. And that could be different dye lots too. Um, different segment, color segments are going to be longer than other ones in different dye lots. So hers worked out really nice. Mine, eh, not as great, but I got it to work. Hopefully yours will work out nice and, and crisp and clean. And hopefully um, this video will help you to achieve that, to achieve actually being able to do it. Okay. All right, now I'm going to reference my other one. So I've got, in, typ in typical pulling, you have to remove um, one stitch and begin the next row with the next stitch with the next color in order to offset it. Um, it's a little bit more difficult whenever you have uh, double crochets and doing it that way. So I'm looking back at my other one here to see exactly how I did that. All right, so what I did is I went ahead with one. I went ahead and did one of the silvers on the bottom, chained up and began my next row with the next color. All right, so I typically am supposed to have two double crochets of the, of the silver before the black begins. So I've got two there. I'm gonna chain up one, two. I'm pretty sure I should chain up three since it's a double. All right, looking here, I need to start with black. because that's where we begin here. All right, so I did one silver double and I chained up. And I'm going to begin with black right here. going to take that out and only do a chain of two because that chain of three makes it puff out a lot more than what I like it to be. All right, so here I had done my double. I'm going to chain two and turn. That should actually count as one Okay, I'm gonna try that. So then I'm gonna, this is one black, and then black here and black here. I don't want it to be too puffy. That's what I'm trying to avoid right now. So, so the sides, the edges will be a lot um, more straight. 
All right, I'm going into those spaces in between. I'm doing these more loosely to try and eat up more of that black, which I didn't get it loose enough. So I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna swat to my eye hook to loosen those up more. All right, the reason why I took that out is to actually make, um, try to eat up more of that silver color on this side. One, two, that's gonna be better already because now I have black on my hook too. Um, going into this space here. I'm still gonna go loosely. I'm still only trying to get one here. One, because I don't want that that far line to be too puffy. All right, very good. Yeah, that's loose, but it works. Switching back to my H hook. Yarn over going into this space to do two silvers. All right, now I start with white into this space. All right, and going over here, because I get two whites, I'm gonna tighten these up a little bit more because I can already tell I did them a little bit too loosely, and it's going to bleed into the silver. And it's going to bleed into the silver anyway, like a full silver stitch. fiddling a lot with this but um, this is what you will most likely experience in doing this hopefully though like I said your colorway your dye lot will be better and easier to work with than this one another easier way to do it um, to be a little bit less specific is just to work it as two colors to work it as black and as white so then you don't really pay too much, too close attention to the silvers blending in and mixing with your white ones. I get a little bit too specific though on it, so. And now I've got black mixing into my silver there. So I would have to go back and tighten those up even more to get rid of that black. All right, three sections of black. Do two double crochets into each space. And I should have three sections of those and my silver is bleeding into that. So here you would definitely go back and um, tighten these up to where you fix this here and you fix this here. And by fixing this one, automatically fixes this one. All right, but for time's sake, I'm gonna keep going. All right, and coming up to this edge, I used to always get a bit leery um, in the moss stitch pulling whenever I come to a turn. I'm hoping that it's actually going to work out right and this one even more so because it's new and it is tricky. Let's see, I'm on this side now. Yeah, I'm seeing I had done the same thing here where I just, I chained up two and I just did the one 
double there and I did the three black there and it worked out well. I'm glad I saved that other one and didn't frog it all out to use it as reference because this isn't the easiest to do. All right, chaining up two, I'm on black. I'm only gonna do one black here because it is the edge and I don't want it too puffy and bulky. All right, getting more yarn here, frogging off my other one. All right, now, so here we start. I've got the three right here and I need to offset it by one. So it's gonna be one, two, and three. So this is just for a turn. That way there, it is gonna be up and over by one. All right, so this is row three. And as we know, with moss stitch pulling, um, row three is where we begin the argyle pattern, which is offset by one stitch. So I'm gonna have to make these tighter to get a full three color sections out of it. And I already see gray popping up, silver popping up on my finger. Arr. All right, so I'm gonna tighten these up, which means I'm even gonna tighten up down here. What's difficult whenever doing um, the granny stitch type of pooling is whenever you have to adjust your tension, you have to adjust it a lot. You have to frog out a lot of it to fix it in the end. Like with doing a granny stripe, which I'm still working on, uh, the neon stripes, um, I'm getting like seven segments out of it. I'm getting like seven of these. So, by the time that you get to the end, if you were too tight and you have a whole lot of color left over, then you have to frog out like almost all seven of them just to loosen it up to, um, to get it to end out correctly. And it's long and it's so tedious. All right. So see, I tightened those up and that came out good. That came out well. There is a bit of the silver there. You'd want to try and fix that too, if you'd like. I am not. I am continuing on. Two silver stitches. I'm still making these tight because of how difficult it was on the previous row where these just didn't come out as well. So I'm tightening these up. Hopefully these will come out better this time. As you can see, silver up and over by one. White right here. So we are lining up correctly. I'm not chaining one in between because it makes it um, more of a tighter pattern. If you chain one in between, then it's going to be um, a lot more holes, a lot more spaces. Silver that goes into the black, much better. We actually have black on the hook and it's not eating into that silver stitch silver silver up and over by one and now black is here and we begin our black right here one two and three and um this design is really cool especially with the zebra because it does make it look like um a checkered flag like on a racetrack like the indy 500 or something so it does give it a completely different type of look um, I also saw someone else did this same technique using Icelandic. And that looked really cool too. So the, the tricky part to all of pulling is your turns. Making sure that you begin your next row where it needs to be. This should be, I've got a whole lot of silver left over here going into this, going into the white, and that's kind of odd. I'm going to loosen that up. That's going to happen with, with your yarn, just in general. 
not every color segment is going to be perfectly matched with your previous color segments or the next color segments. All right, so now I'm coming up to the turn. So here I'm going to, I'm gonna put one double crochet here Chain two, turn. I'm looking, seeing where I need to be. Oh, I just realized what I did. No, that was correct. I had to have black here, just three blacks on that one. That's correct. All right, so I've got white here. Where am I going here? All right, I need to have black, black, and black. So I need silver here. Because this one is black, so I need to have blacks begin here. So I might have to put two silvers into this corner. I don't like doing that because it makes it a little bit wider here. Let me see what I can do to change that a bit. <laughs> Excuse you. I'm switching to my eye hook. Putting two whites here. I'm going more loosely here. One, chain two. And the silver here. And then it's not perfect. I still have more silver here. I'm still using my eye hook. begin this one with black and we come out with silver where we need to begin the silver at okay so even though this one here has some interference with uh, the silver in it my edge is still nice and straight and the black is ending where the black needs to be. It is difficult to make out at times um, exactly where your correlating row is going to be. Um, whenever you're looking at it, sometimes it gets confusing. Um, whenever I was working on this one, at times I was looking at two rows down, three rows down instead of where I was supposed to be looking at. So like here, we have to look here. Um, that can, that is one that will mess people up a lot, is not looking at the correct correlating corresponding row. Alright, so silver is here, and I'm putting silver here. I'm still using my eye hook at the moment. Let me see how well that's going to turn out. Two whites. Yeah, so I'm going to make these tighter to get two full whites out of it. And that didn't work. Swap. Alright, so silver here, silver here. I'm doing these tight. White here, white with some silver mixed in it. Here's my second white one. And silver. I'm glad I tightened those up because there's the black 
starting in at the end of that silver stitch. And as we see, there's black here and we need the black to begin here. Three black segments. So we have three black segments and then we have basically four of the white silver segments together. Silver here, silver here. White and white. So here I'm at the end. I'm going to put one white one here. I'm afraid I did these too tight because this is on the other end, same thing. Chain up two, one silver here, and then black needs to begin here. Because here, we have the one black and then we have one, two, three. So here, I need to have silver go here and one, two, three with the black. All right, so I'm going to tighten these up. On the other side, I had to loosen them up to uh, make sure that these went correctly. So here, I'm gonna tighten these up to make sure these go well. putting one right in here. I'm going to split this one here. I hope I'm doing this right. Um, I will double check it to make sure. Because like I said, it um, these, these edges and these corners are different and they are tricky. But it is important that they are nice and straight. All right, and I needed a silver to start here because I have one, two, three black. And it worked, yay. Yes, I have black that is starting to uh, muddy up that silver, but you know what, I don't care because it's like working, so we are going with it. All right, in the corner, these edges are um, somewhat straight. I know that this one here, but this is like the beginning that beginning one. Um, I only did a chain two. We couldn't very well only do a, um, no, 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 that's not what it, actually. This one here is where I did the fourth one from the hook. Um, so maybe I only needed to do the third from the hook on that to make it not bump out so big. On my other videos uh, with just the moss stitch, I do the third one from the hook. But because these were double crochets, I did fourth from hook. So yeah, maybe third from hook would have actually been better to where it wouldn't have been so bumpy. All right, so we have black. I know I have black here, but we've got one, two, three, and this is where I need to be. One, two, I don't like my videos to go super long. Uh, my hour long videos tend to be too long. They take a very, very, very long time to upload onto YouTube. Um, some of them have taken longer than 24 hours to actually upload. But it's important on this video that I keep going. Um, I like my videos to be around 30-ish minutes. Um, some are, some aren't. But like I said, the longer ones take very long time to upload. But since this is a different type of technique, I'm going to continue going with it because um, it's important that we really focus on these corners, these edges, making sure that our rows come out well. And it was also important that this one was two segments instead of just one. Um, it needed to be two repeats. One repeat just wouldn't have really come out well on this. 
So it's important that I did it in two repeats, minimum of two. Three repeats would have been way too long for uh, this type of video. One, two, three, too much black, so I need to loosen this up. I hope yours is going well. There we go. Much better. Silver, silver. So here's the edge. So where do I need to go with this one? All right, here's black. So black needs to begin here. So that means I need white, white, silver, and black. So with this, you're gonna have to plan your next row before you even get to it chain two, put one here, okay, so here I need, okay, I've got one, two, three black, so this one actually needs to be silver, and I'm not even nowhere near the silver, so I'm going to go back and loosen these up, swap out to my eye, Put one on that edge, chain two, turn, one right here, and now I'm a lot closer to the silver, still using my eye because I need to eat up plenty of that silver in here before I get to the black, as you see the black start coming along, and now onto the black, make sure we're still correct here. So this black goes with this black. And yes, it is difficult to see whenever they're all jumbling up there and all merging together. It does make it more difficult. But you really have to pay attention to wh where your correlating row, your corresponding row is in order to get your sections to land right. Pulling out some more yarn. This one here is getting smaller and smaller. That's all right, I just do these for um, videos anyway. I haven't made a zebra project in quite some time. I think the only actual full zebra that I had done was a scarf for a friend of mine for Christmas. I did, um, a planned pulled scarf it had tassels on it and I also made a matching pair of crocodile gloves so those were like really really cool um, you can check out my video on crocodile gloves I show how to make those those um, dragon scale dragon scale gloves the video is called crocodile gloves but those are actually um, they call them dragon scales because they look like you know little dragons dragon scales which is neat um, and it worked really cool with the zebra because he the zebra actually did uh, make a pattern on the wrists so that was pretty neat my video is not in zebra my video is in um, echo red heart Let's see, what was that called? Unforgettable in Echo. 
if you do a dragon scales out of the super saver or a different type of yarn you really have to pay attention to the width of the yarn itself um, unforgettable is really really thin so you have to use a smaller size hook which also dictates your starting chain you will only do um, you will do 24 in the starting chain whereas if it was a thicker yarn you only do 20 you use a larger hook size and you only chain 20 on that just throwing that out there I know I mentioned it in the video as well yeah I get sidetracked easy okay silver and silver will go here we're still going good um, our colors are still lining up nicely we are not stacking because you have to pay attention on your corners um, like I've had to add extra I'm um, like an extra stitch here on the end um, so that kind of pushes things over and if you don't watch it you very very easily could begin stacking and it looks like I'm going off here because these are going this way but whenever you look at it over here these are actually going this way as you can see here and as you can see here so you see this section here and they're all going this way here and it's like oh no this is like wrong and all these are going this way and this way too but it's actually right because these are three rows together you have to remember that you have a correlating row beneath I'm gonna do this next row and point that out all right making sure here that I'm going in the right spot all right so here's here's silver so I need silver to go here here is black I need my black to begin here so silver so I need a white one here do I have enough white I don't know if I do I have enough for one stitch of white to go there so I'm going to tighten these up yes it's annoying so on this side I have to go tighter on this side I have to go more loose to get them to go right Tightening these up, putting one double crochet into that, into this side, chain two, turn, putting one right in here, and now white in here. My silver is probably going to, yeah, my silver is going to go into it a bit. But that's the best I can get it. I'm going on. Silver needs to be here. And the black is starting to bleed in on that silver. Kind of like it did here as well. But I'm starting my black here. Like I said, hopefully yours isn't um, being as difficult and the colors are lining up better. It's definitely one that you have to really work with to get your colors to um, not interfere with other colors. Kind of like muddy legs. Um, and with the moss stitch, it's muddy and split legs. But here, it's like intertwined in it. Alright, so silver is here. So here I've got the black. goes with this black this silver is going to go here to this silver so see how they were like oh no they're all going this way but actually here is where um this silver is going to match up with this one here so as you can see it is actually going correctly and then this white goes up with this one so don't freak out whenever your colors merge in the middle because they're going to do that Silver and silver. And starting with black, that's great. Black is here. Black goes here. So 
three segments of black. Last one here, last one goes here. All right, so this side, I'm feeling of it and can tell that these are more loose, looser stitches than on my other side, so I need to loosen some up here. Probably not enough. I'm gonna go ahead and swap to my, swap it out to my eye hook because I know this is my looser side. Two here. See, this dye lot is, is so funky. Like that should be black and it it's like it's darker here and kind of in the middle it's like this white gray and this was not the best dye lot. Chain two, turn, do one here and stop and look to see where I need to be. I didn't plan, I didn't look at this row from below. Okay, so I need white to go above this silver one and then my silver one needs to needs to be here. And then here's the three blacks, so it'll be black, black, and black. That's also like a very, very important aspect of pooling is you have to be able to recognize where your stitches need to be and where your stitches are supposed to land. If you have trouble seeing that, you're gonna have troubles with pooling. I'm tightening these up. You have to be able to identify mistakes and fix those mistakes and be able to see where your pattern is going off. Um, and that just comes with practice. That comes with experience in doing it. I'm going into the silver here on this white one. Wait, yeah, no. I needed white here. Silver needs to be here. I don't need to be tightening these up. Sorry, I gotta loosen those. All right, so like I said, you have to be able to spot your mistakes and be able to correct those mistakes. All right, I was able to eat up more of that. So this one here actually needed to be more white um, because I have two whites and then silver begins here. And then I had to have black beginning here. This is getting frustrating. But that's also what happens with doing um, a granny type of stitch. Whenever you're working with double crochets and it's a granny type of pattern, whenever you have one entire segment that's off, you have to go back and readjust several segments just to get that one segment correct. All right, so I loosened all those up, chaining two, white here, but I can only put one white here because we want to keep that row straight. Two whites here and then silver. Yay, silver. It's always um, very satisfying whenever you have to adjust and adjust and fix and fix, and then it finally goes right. It's like, whew, thank goodness. It's such a relief. All right, so black is here, and I need black to be here because here's my silver and silver. And black is here. So I've got one, two, three, one, two, and three. I hope you guys can see that clearly and I hope it's clicking for you. These are um, going to, I know several people are going to wind up uh, doing this pattern because hey, it's new, it's different, it looks really cool. Um, so I'll be excited to see all of the the different projects come out now using this new type of pooling. I'm not sure who it was on the pooling page that decided to go with this, but it's coming out very, very nicely, very neat. 
There's been so many cool designs and uh, different ways to pull. Um, so many different techniques now as we crocheters and poolers uh, decide to come up with new things and develop new ways of pooling. I didn't come up with this, someone else did, but um, was asked by several people to make a video of it. So I had to figure out the stitch in order to actually make a video. So I'm thankful that um, I was able to actually do so. Silver and silver. And black is going into that silver stitch. I would have to go back and um, tighten these up to get the black out of that one. But I want to do this one last turn over here. All right, and this is my tight side. I can tell, I can feel it, that these are tighter. And with plan pulling, you're gonna have that. You're gonna have some stitches that are more tight, other stitches that are more loose. Um, and that's just kind of the way, that's it's the nature of the beast with trying to get your stitches to land correctly. So I know like it might look like kind of a blobby mess, but if you continue on with the pattern, you will see that it is going to um, make that that X pattern, that Argyle pattern. I will continue on with this and my finished work will be the picture that's in the thumbnail of this video so that um, you will actually be able to see the finished design that it will continue to come out because as long as you're up one and over one it is going to continue to create that pattern. And it does look like a really cool checker flag. One and two. Now stopping to make sure. Yes, so my silver needs to be here. And then I have three black. And then it will be one, two, three black. Do you see my card anywhere? I'm going to tighten these up. Thank you. All right, so I got silver going into that one but I needed to have more silver here but the black is bleeding into it but I think that will work silver silver and then black 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 stitches there I'm gonna do this here make sure that's coming out well silver goes here. I made that a bit tight, I think, but that'll be okay. I had my husband go grab my card for me. All right, so always with my uh, PSA, my public service announcement, do not take these antibiotics, and there's very, there's a lot more than just those that are on the list. I'm going to lay that there, so hopefully you guys can see it as I continue to do that. All right, um, they cause debilitating injuries to people. I was injured by Leviquin, and I still can't work from it. It's been over a year now. So I know I talk about this in all of my videos, but um, it's very, very important. Um, whenever I first started my videos over a year ago, I had not been injured. Um, and then 
I actually couldn't crochet for several months and stuff. So I want to tell other people about it. Uh, please don't let you or your loved ones take any of these um, antibiotics. The class is called fluoroquinolones. You can tell your doctor don't give me any Cipro. It'll turn around and give you Levaquin. Or don't give me Cipro or Levaquin. And they'll turn around and give you a completely different type of fluoroquinolone. Fluoroquinolone. All right, so make sure that you look for those. Um, doctors just don't get it. Some do, but uh, the majority of them don't. They still are giving these out like candy. So be careful. I don't want it to happen to you too. Um, so that's what I always, uh, I always like to tell people. Don't take those. All right, and I'm here to the end. Black, black, black. So I need to start with the black right here. All right, guys, so thanks for watching, and happy pooling to you all. And uh, thanks for liking and subscribing and for sharing and telling others. And I uh, hope you all have a great day. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and turn here because I've got black that is now going into the turn. So let's see what happens here. All right, so silver needs to be here so this will be white and white so I need a silver that's gonna go here let's see how this works oh, this is my loose side all right so you got whenever um, you're changing colors there on the turn whenever your color goes into the turn that can be super tricky too so I'm glad I was able to uh, finish this video showing that. All right, so silver here, white, white, silver. So silver here, I still have silver, but we're calling that one white. And white here. And it's already going into silver, so let me tighten that up. And silver here. All right, so perfect. All right, so whenever you're coming out of your turns, just make sure that you watch out for that. Um, make sure that your colors line up where they're supposed to be. And I'm going to continue on with this and um, like, subscribe, uh, comment below um, if you have any suggestions or if you have any problems or whatever. You can also find me on uh, Facebook and I've started a new page. It's called Donna McElvaney YouTuber and it's my same picture that I have on my videos um, as my YouTube account shows so message me there. I'd love to help you guys and um, I did it that way so it's easier to find me. And um, hope that helps you guys. And thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, God bless each and every one of you.